Hello class, welcome to Algebra Concepts Lesson 3-5, which is all about the shapes of graphs. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify symmetry, extrema, and end-of-behavior functions. So let's start with a little bit of vocab, okay? So if we're talking about symmetry, so this whole page here, we are talking about symmetry. This is something that you guys started learning about back in elementary school, and sometimes you guys just need a reminder of like, what is symmetry? What it, um, so symmetry is when you can draw a line through something. And if you were to like fold it on that line, the image would match on both sides. It's like a mirror image. What's on one side is on the other. And it's exactly the same on each side. Okay, so if we're talking about symmetry in the y axis, that means that your y-axis is the thing that can cut your graph in half, okay? So this often happens when we have a parabola. It's one of these curved graphs here. Um, that's probably the most common one you'll see. Not the only one you'll see, but probably the most common. And then another um, example would be a vertical line other than the y-axis. Okay, so the way that you express um, symmetry that's not the y-axis is you look at what is the x value. So here it's negative 1. And all you do is you say x equals. So my symmetry for this graph is x equals negative 1. Okay? And then, like I said, for this one, it's the y-axis. So you would just write y-axis. Or another thing you could do if you just want to stick with the x um, a theme like this, you would just say x equals zero. Okay, so for the y-axis, you can either say y-axis or x equals zero. Everything else, you say x equals whatever the number is. All right, so let's figure out if each thing has symmetry. If it does, let's say where that symmetry is. If it doesn't, we get to just move on. So if I look at this first graph here, let's label it A. If I look at this first one right here, I don't really see a spot that I can draw um, a line and get the same thing on both sides. So this would not have symmetry. So it's not symmetrical. <coughs> Excuse me. If I go over here, we'll call this one B. I see that it has a similar shape. It kind of looks like an M. And I think if I were to draw a vertical line right here and fold on that line, it would be the same on both sides. So this is symmetrical, and it's symmetrical at x equals, and that would be 1.5 because it's between 1 and 2. All right, let's move on to our next one. We'll call this one letter C. So is this one symmetrical? Usually our parabolas are symmetrical, and by usually I mean always, so that's fun. So here's my <coughs> line of symmetry. Sorry about that. Um, so again, since it's symmetrical, I say yes, and then I say x equals, in this case, negative 2. And I'm done with that one. Now I'm going to move on to the last one and see, okay, I have kind of a weird curve happening here. Um, I don't see a spot that I can draw a vertical line and get a line of symmetry. So I'm just gonna say no, that's not symmetrical. Okay, so now I want you to look at this first graph and determine, does this have a line of symmetry? And if it does, what is that line of symmetry? Good luck. All right, hopefully you saw that Hey, it's parabola. Miss Johnson just said that they're always symmetrical. If you draw a line at x equals 4, you have a line of symmetry. All right, moving on to this next one. We have this graph kind of going up there. Is this symmetrical? Go ahead and take a minute and think about that. Good luck. Hopefully you said, no, it's not symmetrical. There's no spot that I can draw a vertical line where I'll get the same thing on both sides. All right, now we are moving on to um, figuring out when we do have symmetry, what does it mean? Okay, so here we have 
A fountain is spraying a stream of water into the air. The solid portion of the graph represents the path of the water, where x is the distance in feet from the fountain, and y is the height in feet of the stream. Find and interpret any symmetry in the graph of the function. So if I look at this graph, I see, okay, I have a parabola, and it looks like if I were to draw a line right here, that would be a line of symmetry. So it would be at x equals, um, not a, I was going to write negative 2, but that's not right, x equals 2. Okay, so um, let's think about what would that mean. Uh, so that line uh, of symmetry right here that I drew in tells you that the height of the stream of water, because this right here is the height of that water, right? And it, if you look at it on either side, it matches from zero seconds to two seconds is the same thing as two seconds to four seconds. So that's what that line of symmetry tells us. It tells us when that height of water ends up being the exact same. So when it's at zero, it's the same as the height when it's at four seconds. When it's at um, one second, it's the same as the height that it's at when it's at three seconds. So it tells you that information. All right, then moving on to question two, we have the graph represents the height y in feet that the main cables of a suspension bridge are above the water x feet from the north tower. Describe any symmetry in the graph of the function. So you can see we have a little diagram, north tower, cables, south tower, and then we have the height of the cables and the distance from north tower. So I want you to look and see, okay, where's the line of symmetry in this graph? And then I want you to match it to an answer over here. Good luck. Okay, hopefully you selected answer D, that it's symmetric in the line x equals 1800, right? Because if we did 226, that's going to be way down here. 550 is going to be a little closer, but 1800 is between that 1200 and 2400 label. So that's where our line of symmetry is in this um, example. Now let's move on to some new vocab for our next example. We are talking about where things are increasing and decreasing. So if we start with this first graph right here on the left, um, you can see that it's th uh, two different colors, right? It's orange and then it's green and then it's orange. So when you are telling if a graph is increasing or decreasing, you always read the graph from left to right. Okay, so starting at the leftmost part of this graph and then moving right, I can see, oh look, I go down first. And then right about here, I turn and I start going up and then I go down again. So that's why this is considered decreasing. Some students see this arrow pointing up and they're like, Miss Johnson, this is increasing. Well, it's not because we always go from left to right, just no matter where those arrows are pointing. Okay. So left to right, it goes decreasing, increasing, decreasing. Okay. So that's our first bit of um, information. We're going to identify those sections on graphs here in just a second. The other bit of information that you need to learn is something called a relative minimum and relative maximum. So um, relative minimums and maximums are kind of like those turning points in the graphs. Uh, so point A looks like it's the lowest part of this graph, like that can be, that a value can be determined, right? This line keeps going and means that it's going to go much lower than point A, but we don't know how to define that because we don't know where it stops. And actually, since it has an arrow, it never stops. It goes on forever and ever. So we use the term relative minimum to describe a spot that is um, a low point in the graph, even though it's not the lowest point in the graph. Okay, and then same for maximum. When you have a point that's not the 
highest point in the graph, but um, it is still a high point in the graph. Okay, so relative means that it's not the highest or lowest, but they are um, still high and low for the, that graph. The other word is extrema. So that means the highest or the lowest, okay? So that means like when you have a graph that maybe looks like this, a parabola, you would have a um, minimum or if you had a, an upside down parabola, you would have a maximum, okay? So those are extrema because the graph would never go uh, um, above or below those points, okay? And those words can get a little confusing sometimes. So if you have questions, please don't be afraid to ask. I'm happy to help you. All right, so example three, we're gonna practice that increasing and decreasing part first. So determine where f of x is increasing and or decreasing. So remember, we're always gonna go left to right. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the leftmost part and I am going to go down first and I keep going down all the way until I hit this point. That's where I start to turn to go up, right? And that x value is zero. So I'm gonna write zero here because I'm gonna say when x is blank, then zero, the graph goes up when viewed from left to right. Okay, so that's actually not what we just looked at, but when x is blank, then zero, the graph goes, oh, <laughs> this should say down. My bad, that's a typo. <laughs> when x is blank, then zero, the graph goes down when viewed left from right. So the function is decreasing for x and zero. So we have to figure, is x less than zero over here or is x greater than zero? So our x values would be going down. So when x is less than zero, x is less than zero, the graph is decreasing. Then over here, when x is getting, or when x is bigger than zero, right? These are my positive numbers for x. So when x is greater than zero, it is um, increasing. Okay, so key takeaway here, I feel like I did that in a slightly confusing way, so I'm gonna recap one more time. Um, when you are going left to right and it goes down, we are in the x is less than zero portion. And then when we go up, we are in the x is greater than zero portion, because here are my positives and here are my negative x values. If you have questions on that, please be sure to ask. Um, why don't you go ahead and try to figure this one out? We have over which interval or intervals is f of x decreasing, okay? So remember, always go left to right. And where is this graph decreasing? Go ahead and take a minute and figure that out. Good luck. All right, for this problem, hopefully you said letter B, that x, uh, that the interval where it's decreasing is from zero to four. So zero is less than x is less than four. Okay, and I highlighted that section of the graph in purple. If you have questions about that, please be sure to ask for some help. I'm happy to help you. Well, let's move on to the next example. So now we've done the increasing, decreasing, let's practice with the extrema of f of x and identify each point as a relative maximum or minimum. So the extrema, so the extrema um, would be points B and C. And then if we look at this, are B and C maximums and minimums or are they relative maximums and relative minimums? So um, if I look at point B here, because it's the highest point, it's that turning point of the graph, point B would be a relative maximum 
because while it's high for the graph, it's not the highest because this arrow tells me it's going to go and keep increasing. And then point C would be a relative minimum because it's a low point of this graph. It's at that turning point, but the graph is going to go lower um, over here. So the extrema are B and C, and they're both relative extrema. So relative maximum, relative minimum. Okay, if you have questions about that, ask for some help. And now I want you to look at this graph and determine which of these points are relative maxima or maximums. Um, I think you guys are would call it that, but maxima is another term you can use to represent multiple. Good luck. For this problem, hopefully you said the relative maxima are B, D, and F um, because they are the highest points. They're all at the same level. Um, the graph is not going any higher. That's what it, um, but we don't know that for sure. So that's why we still say it's a relative maxima. Um, so they are the high points. If you have questions on that, ask for some help. Let's move on to example five. We have a comic book store uses a function to model its profit in thousands of dollars given the price in dollars that it charges for individual issues. Determine whether point D is a relative minimum, relative maximum, or neither. Then interpret its meaning in the context of the situation. So this two-part question. First, we want to figure out, is it a relative minimum, relative maximum, or neither? So let's look at our graph. We have the cost per issue. So $1, $2, $3, $4, $5, five, uh, all the way to 10. So the store, it looks like, has been checking how much money they can make based on how much they charge per issue. And they're trying to maximize their profits, right? They want to get the most money that they can. That's the goal of a business. And then if we look at um, the y-axis, that tells us how much money they're earning in thousands. So if we look at point D, you can see it's the highest point of this graph. So this would be point D is a relative maximum. Right? It's the highest of point of the graph. Um, and going from there, if we want to interpret its meaning, um, it would represent the greatest profit that they can make given the price per issue. So that kind of tells us that $4 per issue would be, um, would give us the biggest profit. It would give the company the most money. Okay, so that's what that relative maximum is telling us in this situation. I didn't write all of that down um, just to save time because this is a long lesson. But if you want me to repeat any of that or you want me to go through that with you, please ask for some help. I'm happy to help you. I want you guys to look at this graph um, that it's a function that models the height of a ball in feet given the number of seconds after it is thrown into the air determine the extrema. So I want you to figure out which point is the relative minimum, which one is the relative maximum. Good luck. All right, for this problem, hopefully you said point B is going to be our relative minimum because it's uh, down here. And then point A is our relative maximum because it's our highest point on the graph. It must be the highest point that that ball reached in the air. Okay, next vocab for the lesson. I know there's so much vocab here, but I bet you guys, you guys got this. Um, so now uh, we are talking about like what is called end of graph or end of function behavior. And basically what that means is you describe what the arrows are doing. Okay. So we've done a lot with like the curves and all that, but now you're telling me where these arrows are pointing. Okay. So if we look, um, right here, this part right here, we're going up. 
um, as we're moving left on our graph like this, our x value is going down, but you can see it's pointing up. So that means our y value is going up. So what this is saying is as x decreases, y increases. And then over here with this portion with the arrow, our x value, right, we're moving to the right, our x is increasing, but our y is decreasing. So you can see as x increases, y decreases. That's what we're practicing now. Okay, so if we look at this graph right here, you can see that as x decreases, right, it's getting x is decreasing, our y is also going down in this case. So as x decreases, y decreases. And then over here, as x increases, y is also increasing, okay? So you can see here's like more of a picture from the book. Um, as you move left on the graph, the y gets negative. So as x decreases, y decreases. And then the other way is x increases, y increases. Um, I'm okay with you guys using some shorthand like this. Uh, as you're, especially as you're taking notes, um, and as long as it's clearly marked, I am going to be okay with you doing stuff like this on your review as well. All right. So now I want you to look at this graph and figure out the end behavior of f of x. Good luck. All right. Hopefully you said as x um, increases, y decreases, and as x decreases, y increases, which is letter D. If you have questions about that, be sure to ask for some help. And let's move on to our last example for today. Um, it's the same idea, but this time it's not a straight line. So um, if you're looking right over here, you can see as x decreases, my y value is also decreasing. So you can see as x decreases, y decreases. Then over here, leading up to my arrow, my x value is getting bigger because I'm moving to the right on my graph, and y is also increasing. So it says as x increases, y increases. So it's the same idea, just a different shape for our graph. All right, so this is the last question for you guys to do today. Um, go ahead, take a minute, and look at this one. Good luck. All right, for this one, hopefully you said letter A, as X increases, Y increases, and as X decreases, Y decreases. If you have questions about this problem or anything else from this video, please be sure to ask for some help. I'm happy to help you, and I hope you have a great day.